It's, it's worth thinking to start off. I mean, absolutely, the R and D spend, as we'll just say, as a percentage of GDP, is much less in Africa than it is in uh, other countries, more developed nations. But I, yeah, this is a study I once saw that I think it's worth thinking about. Is there's government spend, there's philanthropic spend, and there's uh, business spend in R and D. And government spend, at least in South Africa, is not that much different than, you know, say, the United States. It's maybe half the amount if you take it as a fraction of the uh, GDP. Uh, 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 the, it's the um, business spend that is much less. And the businesses that exist in Africa, and certainly South Africa since I'm more familiar with it, are not the type that do R&D as much. So they have, the, the pharmaceutical industry is more of a mature generic industry, not the one that's trying to derive new uh, entities. So we get into a little bit, you, you could argue, a chicken and an egg situation that starts all the way at the university level uh, in trying to promote R&D work and get funding for it. Is If you have a, a young scientist who wants to do pharmaceutical research, there aren't that many jobs, therefore, in South Africa for doing that, what I think is very exciting, uh, R&D research. Uh, so therefore, why would he go through the rigors of the university curriculum and otherwise beyond graduate work to get the degree in order to do it? 